The market has been crashing and now a lot of these projects like XDC are back to their 2022 lows almost, which is insane. Now, I've talked about XDC on multiple occasions. I still believe that this thing is extremely overlooked and will be a massive giant in the coming weeks, months, and even years ahead. And we are going to be talking about why everyone should be watching XDC right now. So with that being said, welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. And also, if you're not already following me on all social media platforms, go down in the description below and follow me on every single social media platform to make sure that you are staying up to date on everything crypto and join the free discord to make sure that you guys are crushing these cycles and taking profits. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about XDC and even XRP. Big shout out to Smoke Dog for this. We have confirmation of institutional staking with XRP and XDC. These are the two main ones here. Uh, here is a 2024 legal prospectus from Valor Digital uh, Securities. Digital Securities equals Securities ETF and ETP that are linked to digital assets. The prospectus provides all necessary legal and financial information on Valor's XRP, XDC physical staking products and the major fiat currencies they will be available in. Physical staking means that the passive income offered by this product will involve actual XRP and XDC tokens. Institutional DeFi is coming. And yes, as we look at some of these ecosystems, right, specifically even XDC, I, I, I want to center out on XDC for a second. You know, if we go back to 2020 to 2021, XDC didn't really have much tied to it until now. XRP's the same, right? You might think that, oh, XRP's been around for a very long time, so the ecosystem has to be massive, there has to be a lot of offerings. No, guys, up until just recently, a lot of these networks, Hedera's another great one to mention, have lacked ecosystem and have lacked a lot of things that the ecosystem needs in order to compete with these other networks in the space and now a lot of them like xdc and even xrp have a ton of offering versus what 2021 was like xdc for an example has a lot of tokenization um efforts happening on the on the actual network uh, outside of you know trade finance there's also a lot of great ecosystem players around like tokenized gold uh, we've been also focused on um, DeFi initiatives, even Impl with cross-border payments as well. There's a lot happening around XDC now than ever before. Now, talking more so about trade finance, though, I do want to put a spotlight on it in this video, um, similar to almost every single other video as well, because recently on July 6th, we got this announcement. Successful completion of electronic promissory note transaction by XDC Trade Network. This is a very big deal because outside of this do you guys remember the first ever trade finance nft yeah it was hosted on the xdc network back in november of 2022 a lot of people overlooked this because ftx was happening at that time trade finance represents an estimated 80 to 90 percent of global trade volumes and exceeds 25 trillion it is a low risk source of funding yet a large portion of small to medium-sized businesses do not have access to it and that's where we really kind of look at Trade Phoenix um, and a few other players that are on the XDC network that are offering funding to SMEs and allowing uh, Trade Finance to also be extremely liquid. But Trade Finance is a massive industry that a lot of people are just overlooking. And XDC is at the forefront of this and always has been. But now, if we look at this from just recently, July 6th, we are delighted to announce that XDC Trade Network Platform has successfully completed a pre-shipment financing transaction against an electronic permissory note. The electronic permissory note, EPN, has issued or was issued uh, using the uh, Credor platform, which leverages the trade trust utility and is compliant to the MLETR requirements for issue and EPN data standards from ICC, DSI, and framework with DLPC business best practices by BAFT was used. This unique milestone marks the beginning of a significant stride in leveraging technology, framework, legal entity identifier by uh, Gleef to enhance digital transactions in cross-border trade and financing them. And yes, this is a very big um, announcement considering the fact that if we scroll down, we could see multiple players incorporated in this. 
but the trade financing platform itself is the XDC Trade Network. And even the documentation platform, which is Credor, which is provided by Trade Trust Utility on the XDC Network, and then the blockchain itself is XDC Network, and this is all with Trade Phoenix as well. This is all tied back to XDC. Like, it's kind of crazy that more people are not looking into how big of an innovation this actually is. And not to even mention the fact that as we look at trade finance, it's a massive industry. XDC is at the forefront of it. And this is kind of one of the first industries that will be fully tokenized and digitalized. Even over here, we have digitizing trade finance. This is from the BIS, the Central Bank of Central Banks. They already told us that in order to digitize trade finance, they need to have these big players working with public and the private sector. This is where we look at these new technologies that are being uh, developed, designed, and even utilized. And that's where we look at DLT, blockchain, and other players. Now, the big thing is digital islands, right? We need interoperability. We need trade finance inclusion for small, medium-sized enterprises and trade tech for emerging market economies. Like All of this is what XTC has been focused on since day one. This is why I've always said that as we look at this space, you kind of have to pick and choose the big winners that you foresee becoming the big winners. XDC is one that as a visionary in this market, you can kind of see all of the work that they've been putting in really kind of paying off. Right now, as we really look at what XDC does have to offer, it's truly embracing all of the inefficiencies that trade finance has had, and they're providing the efficiencies to Im improve and have trade finance truly you know, usher into the digital age. And that's why I look at what's happening around the world with a lot of these big banks that are now pushing for, you know, trade finance to be digitized. Even over here, PwC, just recently, the benefits of digitizing your trade finance. And they put out a full report regarding this. They even um, talked a little bit more about digital solutions and they mentioned Swift, which by the way, if you guys didn't know, XDC already is plug and played within Swift. Outside of this, we also have from BBVA, Digitizing Global Trade Finance, a progressive and necessary process. Another major player pushing this. Then Bank of America, Connected Trade, Transforming Global Trade Finance. And this is utilizing automated digital solutions through AI and DLT and blockchain. So many are missing the big point here right? Like the world is ready to embrace these technologies. All we're waiting for is regulation. City, digitizing trade, challenges and solutions. And this was a full, you know, discussion on this, the opportunity for change and, you know, how digital strategies are crucial to have right now. It's pretty wild that as we really look at this space, everyone is still looking at the price action. They're still waiting for the bull market and the bear market. I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm waiting for the utility age of DLT because that's where all of the big money actually is. That's where City and Bank of America and all of these big banks are now tapping in. And we have with regard to optimizing the sharing of data, DLT such as blockchain is an important development largely because of the security it can provide, but also because it enables end-to-end -end visibility in the supply chain. Like this is from Citi, the, one of the largest banks out there, a bank that everyone pretty much knows. This allows companies and financial institutions to collaborate much more closely than previously possible and can be prog programmed to take into account geopolitical issues, regulation, and data privacy concerns. And while this does not solve the issue of interoperability on its own, APIs allow structured data to be transferred from older legacy systems to newer, more flexible platforms, which if you go and look at what the BIS has been pushing around uh, the Finternet, APIs are the key. And we know that what XDC is offering, it's all around API plug and play technology. Now, outside of this, we also have a guide to digital trade finance, and this is from the ITFA. Now, this breaks down the guide around providing a snapshot of what today's digital trade ecosystem looks like and the overall direction of travel. Now, if we look into this, right, we can go over to the guide, and this is July 2024, just recently got posted. Digitalization has long been a priority for the trade finance industry with operational efficiency and lower transaction cost among the anticipated benefits. Where has the journey got to and how have common frameworks evolved with contributions from experts across the trade finance industry? This guide to digital trade finance charts the direction of travel. Now, 
these are the six main uh, key points here. I don't want to open up the full guide and go over it because I don't want to waste you guys' time. There's a lot of information within it, um, and it will just take like 30 plus minutes to actually fully break it down. But if we take a quick look at the full guide here, these are the six main things that they cover, which is digital trade finance, the state of play. This is a comprehensive breakdown of the current state of play within the industry, looking at the differing fortunes of the digitalization journeys within payments and trade finance industries, digital trade finance, the opportunities and challenges, the opportunities that trade digitalization has the potential to release, as well as the challenges that have curbed or slowed progress so far, legal frameworks, this is with MLATR, the ETDA, things like that, international standards. This is where you look at the ITFA with the ICC, SWIFT, the Bankers Association for Finance and Trade, and the Digital Container Shipping Association. Those are the key bodies and players behind this that are navigating on how trade finance actors can actually fully embrace uh, these new technologies through these standards and through these legal frameworks. And then you also have leveraging innovative technologies. This is where we look at blockchain and AI to even others um, as well. And then the bank perspectives. Now, what I find very interesting about this guide to digital trade finance is that this is also all tied back to what Andre Kasserman put out. For an example, we have ITFA chair Sean Edwards adds in his own foreword to emphasize the importance of interoperability in the development and adoption of negotiable instruments that are compliant with MLATR. We have continued to leverage our DNI initiative. And this was all written by. Andre Kasserman, Developing the Industry Blueprint for Digital Negotiable Instruments, written by Andre Kasserman back in March of 2023. The name's at the top. You can see all of them that are involved here. Now, this breaks down everything um, around you know, how we get to the point of embracing these new technologies. And this is the full blueprint to uh, digital, uh, digital negotiable instruments. You have five major steps here which is aligned policy to technological developments, focus on interoperability to scale use of DNIs, add new value to digital flows, promote open platforms and ecosystems, and then expand supply chain finance. And this is all with these new age technologies. Even up here, they mentioned DLT multiple times, blockchain, uh, AI, all those great you know technology offerings that we're now embracing currently. But remember who Andre Kasman actually is, and I keep, I keep telling you guys this because so many are overlooking how substantial this one individual actually is coming from a substantial background at you know swift and major major companies i'm telling you guys this is the puzzle piece to focus on especially when it comes to xdc because as you guys do see up here he is an advisor at zinfin um he's a senior advisor market engagement zinfin power and xdc network XDC is the key to tokenizing, digitalizing, and really just revolutionizing trade finance as a whole. And if we go back over here, we know that it is a $25 trillion industry that is just continu continuously growing, and there is a gap behind it that needs to be filled. And that's where I really look at XDC becoming a big leader around trade finance. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because of more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.